I said the ego. I was in a good conversation tonight with a friend about the ego. And um, I was explaining that my first... Um, my first interaction with Byron Katie, I went to an, a workshop at Esalen, which is in Big Sur, California. It's a really beautiful resort. If you ever get a chance to do a workshop there, they're high-end, like, top of the top presenters, beautiful place, magical hot springs, healing lands. I highly recommend it. Um, anyway, I was at a workshop. I went to a Byron Katie workshop, and I'd never really been exposed to her work before. Um, no pun intended. It's called The Work. If you go to thework.com, um, you can get all of her stuff for free online, which I really appreciate that. Um, that being said, I don't think I would have really been able to, uh, absorb the information without going to one of her workshops. So I remember what struck me when she said, um, at the time I was kind of, I had been going through some ups and downs and off and ons with my partner at the time. Um, our marriage was kind of, had been rocky. And, and when I think about that, actually, and think about that timeline, cause I really think it got bad just the last couple of years. Um, but actually I guess it started much, much more before that, um, much further before that. So anyway, um, that's just a good mental note for me to realize. Um, so she had said that if her husband walked into the room and her husband was like, I've fallen in love with another woman. I want a divorce that she would feel such joy for him. And I'm sitting in the workshop being like, what? Yeah, fucking right. <laughs> I was like, no way. Like what? Like you basically he's clearly been cheating on you. And you're like, oh, I only have love for you. Like, I was like, what hippy dippy world have I entered into? And that, those, like, that concept really struck with me. And through the rest of the workshop, I was able to process more and more, like, how she felt that way. And I think that that's, you've probably heard me mention this in other videos, but that's kind of what I talk about when I talk about m me being my best self or my best Kelly self. Um my my best self wants to love everyone for exactly who they are um bringing to the table exactly what they can bring to the table um without judgment without disrespect um with love with reverence and you know I'm not there yet uh I I strive towards that I strive towards being the best person that I can be, the best human in the world. I mean, the best human that I can be, like, in the world that we live in. And, um, as my old CrossFit coach would say, be a better human. Hashtag be a better human. <laughs> um, I'm always striving to be a better human. And, you know, I remember when I came home from that workshop and I, I shared that with my, my, um, my now ex-husband. And he, he, uh, clearly, of course, didn't understand it. How could I expect him to? I came home and was like, if you're happier somewhere else, I'll be happy for you. I'm like, and even I kind of laugh at the fact that I came home so cavalier about it. But it, it really does speak to like the core, deeper part of me and the, the part of myself that really is love and exudes love and loves myself and loves the core of other humans and no matter what you bring in front of me. And I, I strive for that. I strive to be the person that can find love and compassion and true deep compassion and love, not, um, well, let me give you the example. I was just thinking of like for a person who, you know, comes up to me with a gun to my head and says, I want to kill you. Like I want to be able to look that person in the eye and, and, have love for them and know that this is what they feel they need to do. This is where they're at. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's just, it's a, a way that I look at life. It's a way that I want to look at people. I, for the most part, you know, I'm not exposed to, um, 
an extreme amount of challenging people. I mean, I could say someone who has different political views than me is very challenging, and that, that's true. And how do I look at that person with love and and understand, and, and even if I don't, like, I because I, I was going to say understand where they're coming from. Well, even if I don't understand where they're coming from, I still want to, like, be able to find love and see love and feel love for them. And I, once I started realizing that my love for my ex was deep and profound enough that I wanted him to be happy. I want him to be happy no matter what. And which was why when I had proposed when we were, um, still together when I had proposed that we separate and see other people, I had actually really hoped he would see other people. And if you had told me that I would be saying that like two years prior, I would have slapped you and laughed my ass off. I really would have. But just through Byron Katie and through silent meditations, I came to learn that I there's just more to life than me. There's more to life than my ego. There's more to life than my ego being happy that he chooses to stay with me, for example. Um, you know, I, I really want, and I still want, so like, so this workshop that I just went to that I just talked about, um, my ex was there at the workshop. We've done all four levels together of, of Human Awareness Institute and, um, the first two we were, um, that we did together, we were, you know, in the relationship still working on the relationship. And then the last two we were not. Um, and you know, we just had this amazing conversation, uh, last night or maybe it was this morning there, all the days are blending together <laughs> with travels. Um, we had this amazing, like heartfelt conversation and, I believe that it's because when we lay all the bullshit aside, we're able to truly connect on a heart to heart level. And, um, unfortunately this, the issues that we had that drove us apart regarding my weight, um, you know, are still there and that's, that hasn't changed and may not change ever, um, or for a long time, um, on his behalf and on my behalf, it would be me being able to love him for his viewpoints of how women's bodies should look. And, you know, I, I have such deep love for him and I know that he's this beautiful human being and, um, and I want to be able to be the person that can, like, like I said, love anyone, love everyone and really see the deep, the deep, like almost childlike soul that we all have in us. You know, ego is a part of us, but it doesn't need to control us. A lot of times our decisions and our feelings, our need for control, our want to control, um, you know, that's, th those are choices. They don't always feel like it in the moment. Hell no. Are you kidding? I'm argumentative. I'm reactive. I like to pick a fight. I like to play devil's advocate with myself even. <laughs> So I know that that's not easy. And I also know that when it comes down to it, I have choice in how I feel and how I react and how I behave. And I, I think that the more that I can work to remove ego or be conscious of ego, not remove it. It's never, Ego's never going to go away. It's a part of me. It's really good. It's really strong. It's, you know, spent 30 something years develop, being developed and being strengthened and being hardened and trained like a ninja warrior that it is. My, my ego's so good. I don't even know when it's at work. <laughs> and I love that. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. Sees for those words. Well, I'll have more thoughts on ego later. I just was thinking about that because my friend and I were hanging out talking about, you know, being able to love 
someone even with the bullshit that they bring to a relationship. Well, you know what? I'm only able to see that bullshit because I'm projecting that. It's my own bullshit. You know? If I see bullshit that he's bringing, it's because I'm bringing that same bullshit. So, so I need to work on me. I need to work on that. Because um, that's my ego. The world is only a projection of ourselves. That's all it is. Once you realize that, all you have to do is focus within. And I found this deep inner happiness and contentment um, when I do that. And when I start trying to control things outside of me, man, it's amazing how fast I can become unhappy or agitated. Um, just not worth it. Not worth it. Okay. I'm trying to keep these under 10 minutes. Sorry, it's a little over.